Hey, I'm not bored. Anyone else? It's a good opportunity. I just thank God for each one. It's kind of bless you, Donna. Just blesses me. And these young ones, like Dave, and that's taking over and just stepping out and, and doing stuff, and Danny, and I just, I'm just. Amen. I'm thankful. I just thank the Lord for you. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm in this bunch. I'm thankful the doors is open. Yes. Bless you. Yes. It's been uh, it's been interesting to say the least. Uh, but God lives forever. He'll never die. You can't shoot him. He doesn't need one of those bulletproof. Uh, Amen. When he when he yes. speaks, we want to get back to Christmas and any message that's preached that has Christ in it through the years is a Christmas message. You can't have Christ without the birth. And I know the day that we've chosen in the world, but it is a day that is set aside for Christmas. The history of the Bible versus the history of evolution and all the things that people believe, this is the important part of the believer is Christmas. We were all born in sin. If we say we never sinned, we call God a liar. But when Christ comes in, and then we have Christmas, we have Christ in our Christmas. Much, much more than just a gift, and I'm not taking that away. Much, much more than family gathering together. There's much, much more to it. Though God uses Christmas that families do gather together. That people deep in their heart, they do give. But there's history behind this. This is prophesied that the virgin would conceive and bring forth a son. This in the thousands of years of life and where we're living today, God is not a liar. God has made promises to the world. And promises are fulfilled. God does not make mistakes. God sent us his son, a perfect Savior. Think of that, a perfect Savior. Not one conceived in sin, but born in the flesh, but never sinned. That's the difference in our natural life. God gave us his son. He was born of the Holy Spirit. Though the husband of Mary, being Joseph, assumed to be the father of the child, God made it clear, this is my son. Joseph, who was a spouse to Mary, before they came together, she was found with child. And let me say this not to particularize or discredit any of the religious beliefs very much, but when people worship this virgin Mary, I can tell you that Mary had other children. When people seemingly want to bow and worship the Virgin Mary, yes, when she brought forth the Son, she was conceived of the Holy Ghost, I agree. But Jesus had brothers and sisters. This may seem a little bit uh, off sometimes to the preaching, but God gave us a promise. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, in the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. We know that Jesus is not the son of David, but that Jesus is the son of a promise that comes through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, right on up to Abraham. Moses is included, but there's only one son of God. His name is Jesus Christ. And when we get into some of more of the scriptures of how valuable it is, this is a time for us to be happy. Not happy holiday, but happy translated in being blessed. We need to understand that God is still there for us. These are sad stories that sometimes the church brings to us, but when you request prayer for Jim's 12-year-old daughter, niece, or granddaughter, and when we request prayer for Roger, Dreamer, and others, this is important. 
Jesus prayed. Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed in agony for people. And this is where we are sometimes. Is it our will or his will? When Jesus didn't want to die, Jesus said, this is not my will, but thy will be done. This Jesus, this Christ we're talking about, born a baby in a manger, and, and the, uh, the angels and the shepherds and the wise men, that's a great, great biblical story to read about how important it is. But here we are today, 2,000 plus years later, and he's still alive. He's still alive today. And he's alive because he lives in your heart. There's many things that are taught in the world today that are non-biblical, but it tells us to beware. Be careful. Beware not to be deceived. For the time is here. The time has come when people are believing other things. The truth is all that's going to set us free. The biblical word of truth is all that's going to set us free. Communism will not set you free. Socialism will not set you free. Republican, Democrat, Independent will not set you free. Jesus will set you free. I know that Jesus, God gave us his son for whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life, or should not perish. Not would, but should. And I say this about some of the things that are in the leadership of the country. Not God being in the leadership. Not Christ in the church many times. I tell you, sometimes Christ is not even allowed in the churches today. Muslims. Communism. Socialism. Let me give you a good example. I hope it's a good example. We work to be better Christians. Coming to church, you miss it, that's a good sign. When you can't be here and you miss the fellowship, that's a good sign of what you spiritually want to do to have church. When you work in the church, when you dedicate or do some things, there's a reward. Some 60-fold, some 90, some 100. Some seem to get more for the more and the care that they care. It's not to put someone in a place that they're not important. Everyone is important. But let me just give you an idea about socialism. Oh, everybody's equal. Everybody gets the same. Oh, we want the rich to have and the poor to have, and we want it all to be in the middle. Let me give you an example like school. People study in school. Some people go to school, some people work hard, and some make A's. And some people could care less. They're made to go to school, they don't want to go, they're not going to do their homework, so they get an F. But in socialism, they say everybody comes up to get a C. In socialism, they're all equal. It's not how hard they worked or what they didn't do. Everybody gets the same thing. Well, then why does the person that studies and works hard want to get a C when he says, look, I'm going to get a C if I don't do anything? The church is the same way. God gave us an opportunity that we could grow, not to be better than someone else, but that we could all come together in the name of Jesus Christ. The equality that we have is not that one is better than the other, but we all accept or believe in the name of Jesus Christ. When we all believe in that, that's when we have fellowship. And when we have division, it's because of angry or getting even or a threat or I'm better than you. God didn't set that up. He said, whosoever will, whosoever believeth in me, anyone, then we become equal. Oh, maybe not because we worked harder or maybe we worked less, but it's always because.
because of what we believe in the promise that God would send us a Savior to save us from our sins, to do better in life, to work. No, not capitalism in the world, to be richer, but he has all the riches and all the power and glory that we can have and be better. But he gave us a name in Philippians, a name that is better or greater or bigger than any name under heaven and earth, the name of Jesus. That every knee should bow. Every knee should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Everyone. And then there comes the rewards that God has promised us if and when we believe. In the book of Philippians, if you turn that way, and, and I get all juggled up sometimes and got to go back and look in my own, I get to reading, but here in, in the book of Philippians of what I just quoted here, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, highly exalted him. I'm going to tell you, when you pray, you need to pray in the name of Jesus, Bill. No. A prayer without Jesus is not a prayer. We may have hope. We may have asked for God to intercede. But if you don't believe in Jesus, and there's more about believing in the world and economics and who's going to care for one or care for the other. If we don't have Jesus in our life, we don't have eternal life. We don't have a promise without Jesus that we'll live forever or be resurrected from the dead. He set the perfect example. All along with Christmas, Lord, help me never to forget to have a prayer when the family comes in that we get so anxious or that we serve the table and we have all the family that we, being an individual, maybe among all the other believers, that we're ashamed or, or maybe that it's not important enough for us to say, hey, you know what? We've never prayed at dinner before. I want to do it. That means something. If we're the one that steps up as the adult that says, you know, we have to take time. I've never in, in our home always someone before we eat will say, Dad or Roy, or we need someone to pray. And that's because God has blessed us and we need to be thankful today Amen. for where we are Amen. in this pandemic, in this time. We have a lot of things to be in fear for today. This pandemic is real. It's not the first one. May not be the last one. And there'll not be a cure. There's vaccines and there's helps. But there's no cure for flu, whooping cough. But there is a cure for sin. Amen. A cure, a 100% cure. A slate to be wiped clean. The things, as, as Paul and one of us would say, I things come back to my memory that I'm ashamed of or that I'm sorry for, but I have to remember that God forgave me of all those things, and sometimes he has to remind me of where he brought me from. Amen. And where I am so that I don't go there again, I go there. Right. Absolutely. I want to look up. All things are possible with God. Oh, we preach this invisible God and say, oh, where is he from and what's he preaching about? I've never seen him. You've seen him sent in the image through his son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit that born Jesus Christ walked in the flesh that we could see the God. This is not a secret. Jesus wasn't hid in the corner. He died in the flesh God did not spare him to die in the flesh, and we all die, and after death, the judgment. But God showed us plainly there is life after death. Oh, my, don't we dread it. Don't we dread crossing that so-called river of death. I'm not going to die and cross that river, Jordan. It's been crossed. 
Joshua dropped across that river Jordan, and Moses went through the sea. The only place I want to cross is from death unto life. That's the crossing I want to look. And we say no so many times, but I'm a nice person. I don't hurt anybody. I do my own thing. I'm good with my wife, the kids. I care about people. But I'll tell you, if there is no confession of faith, there is no eternal life. When we evaluate ourselves to be better, or look what I've done, and I don't hurt nobody, if we evaluate ourselves, even though the hurt we've had in our life of losing families and friends, if we don't evaluate ourselves as we do in the time of communion, we have to look at us as an individual. And if you help yourself, you'll help others. When you begin to look in the depth of the hearts of the people who are hurting today. Hurting today because they've lost family. Hurting today because a relative is sick. Hurting today that you have to look in a window and know that someone has a disease or sick. But when you can feel that hurting, God has given you an emotion in your life and it's called love. That's what it is. It's called love. My help us when we don't have love. When we don't care about that other person. When it gets to the point where we'll say, oh, if it were me, I'd slap them or I'd like to catch them out behind a building somewhere. That's not salvation. That's not even religion. But to love one another. That's where we pass from death into life is because we love one another. A serious message here at Christmas. Don't take Christ out of it. With all the shopping, I remember years ago, they wanted to take Christ. Happy holiday, happy holiday. I tell you, I've got a blessed Christmas because Christ is in it. Jesus Christ and church, whether we see it or not, the church is building. In all this, the pandemic and doors are closed. I understand People being sick, I understand. But the church here, though the numbers are down, the church is going to stand when the world's on fire. Amen. We are built on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone of the kingdom. And if we build on the building, we'll be in the building. Praise the Lord. Ah. Oh. When Jesus was tempted, drawn away by the devil, and he asked to bow, give in. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. This touches our heart today that you love all oh, a companion, a child, a grandchild. I know we would sacrifice our life for others. Remember Jesus sacrificed his life for us all. For us all. My, what a wonderful thing. The enemies. Let me tell you about some of the enemies in the world. False teachers. Remember the truth will set you free. This false teaching that everything's okay, you don't have to do anything, just, just whether it be come to church, sing a song, buy another tape, Get something else off of the TV. It's good to be fed. It's good to have life and to feel the feeling of Christ. But what you need is Him inside your life. Not buried, but open. My wife kidded me the other day. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'll just bring it out, I guess. <laughs> You might want to knock that off the back of the video. <laughs> so I've got to go buy some grave plots. I said 40 years ago we was figuring out to be married and 40 years later I'm figuring out to be buried. <laughs> because we all die. We have to not look forward to it. But what is he hereafter? I'm here, but there has to be an after. My, 
I see the Sylvia, companion, David. You know, before this pandemic, they didn't come. Right? Dick, others of you that are visiting. The church is not dead. The church is alive. The church, because you have a desire. Paulette, when you're not here, you still have a desire because you know what God's done for you. And you know what He's done for you. And I know what, I may not know everything He's done for you, but I know He'll do for me what He'll do for you. When we get this deep inside, this joy of our salvation, a joy of a feeling to know I'm forgiven, I'm free, I'm walking in a newness of life. God has blessed me. He's put me on a highway. And if you don't think so, look in the world today where people are who don't believe. They just don't believe. Our leadership, I would make a prophecy, but our leadership in the world today, and I'm going not on an individual basis, has forgotten and not used the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, in God we trust. Praise the Lord. And yes, the Lord's Prayer. But how many times do you see the people in authority now, if ever, other than the preaching of the gospel, use the name of Jesus Christ? Because everybody doesn't believe it. So why am I right? I can tell you why you're right. Because of thousands of years before Jesus was born, Isaiah and other prophets prophesied that the day would come of the birth of Jesus Christ. And in that pathway of life, Jesus even said, in three days, you'll destroy this temple. In three days, this temple will be buried. But I will rise again. Jesus had feelings. He wept when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane as drops of blood. He wept, or as drops of sweat, he wept dearly for people. My, help us never forget. We have, I don't want to say a standard or a rule, but we have guidelines. We have, we have instruction that we can walk right into the kingdom. A straight and narrow way that leads to eternal life. But oh, there's so many distractions, so many wide roads, so many things that change today. This is the evil and the enemy that's come up. Beware. Be careful. I'm saying this to us all. In chapter 3 of Philippians, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but fear. Beware, he said, of dogs. You know that there was a time in history, Jesus and the Jews and the Jewish relationship, that anyone outside that wasn't a Jew was referred to as a dog. The Gentiles, the other nations, God brought it all together. A poor lady comes to Jesus to be saved, to ask Jesus. And he said, it's not meant for, for you to eat from the table. She said, oh, but if I can just eat of the crumbs. Just the crumbs of the table. Just a little bit. But I'll tell you, I'm not eating the crumbs today. I want the full meal. I want the birth. I want the death, the resurrection, the things that he's done. I want it all. I want to get it all in my mind and my heart. What God sacrificed his son. So he asked us to sacrifice our living body, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And it's not that we have to throw ourselves off a bridge, but there's decisions to make. Is it my decision or is it God's decision? I said to a preacher the other day, I said, man, I'll be 70. I'm getting tired. My memory, I'm getting old. And I said, I've got to ask God if I can retire 
If I can just say I'm 70 now, I'm done, I, I'm, I'm finished. I've got to ask God. I can't ask you. And I did ask God. He said no. <laughs> Man, I've got a few months before I'm 70. You have to give me the answer now. <laughs> Things might change. But you can't give up. We can't just give up. But I have to evaluate myself, and you do too. And when we look at ourselves, we look at others different. I can honestly say in my heart, I love you. And I don't believe there's a one of us that has not prayed for one or the other at some time or the other. Even old John back there, I'm starting to like him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that he could ever come in here and me not pick on him. But you, you know, know why I, God said no? Because uh, some were called and some just went. <laughs> yeah, and I think of that. I too. love your message. I should have said that in my testimony because you explain stuff in a way I could get it. So I say Merry Christmas as the day comes. I hope so. Think not of tomorrow. Appreciate all of it. Any comments before we go on? Dismiss. Any comments?